The UK is responsible for the fifth largest area of oceans owned by any nations and has a duty to protect this area. The UK overseas territories are very important. They have a 94% of all the UK biodiversity and the government is called upon to protect these overseas areas and this biodiversity. The world's largest marine reserve in Chagos is 640,000 kilometers square. That's about the area of France. And it's a wilderness that's been uninhabited for 60 years. There are 76 International Union uh, of Conservation Natural Resources red list species. And these include sharks, turtles, and quite a lot of seabirds and corals. The Chagos has pristine waters with undamaged reefs and it's very important as a global reference site. It serves as a benchmark against which we can measure other damaged sites. What the Chagos allows us to do is study a fully functioning coral reef system in the absence of human impact. This is quite important because we can actually look at the effects of climate change without the local human type impacts that usually occur in most places around the world. We can actually assess the resilience of coral reefs. We can, we can see how they can recover from climate change in the absence of these human impacts. The project provides knowledge base for the UK government and for conservation organisations to, to manage this area. And it allows the government to respond to international challenges. They include um, challenges over sovereignty. Um, they also include the issue of resettlement. People did live on these islands um, up until the 1960s and quite controversially uh, these people were removed um, it's essentially to make way for a UK and US military base. Uh, the people had been working in coconut palm plantations um, but as these closed the people were, were, were removed and they went back to the countries from where they had come. These were mostly Mauritius and the Seychelles. There is now pressure to allow resettlement. Some of these people, they're called Chagossians, now live in the UK and in Mauritius and some would like to be able to return to these islands and resettle them. But this has major challenges because these islands have no facilities essentially. There is an air base on the most southern one but many of the islands are scattered over a large area of ocean and there are no airports, there are no um, harbours, there's, there's no electricity, there's no running water. It's a very remote location. The project has looked at the environmental aspects and impacts of such plans to resettle people on the islands. We have also been involved in engaging the Chagossian communities in conservation and understanding the importance of the, the life on these islands. The goal of the project has essentially been to strengthen the marine reserve. Uh, this has been done through gaining scientific knowledge and over the last three years we have run three expeditions to the Chagos uh, with teams of scientists including one Chagossian and we have been um, operating off the British Indian Ocean Territory patrol vessel uh, going to the different atolls and diving around these atolls to understand the marine life. We're monitoring the condition of the coral reefs and um, we also land uh, some scientists on the islands to look at the seabirds and the vegetation of these islands as well. Uh, this has led to a lot of detailed knowledge about the natural resources of the islands. As well as the expeditions, we've been engaged in scientific outreach and this has involved working with the Chagossian communities. Um, we have run family days in London and in Manchester. These are the areas where the, the two largest populations of Chagossians are in the UK. Following that, we, we've invited um, a small group of Chagossians to join a training course. And they've undertaken 
um, a series of modules on marine biology, on uh, terrestrial biology, on communication, um, and really this is to engage them in the project and give them further skills. These Shigossians have become Shigossian environmental ambassadors and during the course of the project we've had 42 of these trained and um, some of them have also been offered bursaries to go and learn further skills. We've also um, then offered a bursary to one of these Shigossians each year to join us on the expedition and take part in the science. The other aspect of the project is to inform others about the significance of the marine reserve. Not many people in the UK realise that we have the largest marine reserve in the world. We go to scientific conferences, um, we talk about what we've discovered in the Shagos, we talk about our monitoring and we raise the awareness of this site. And this is very important because coral reefs are under threat and these are some of the best reefs in the world. And by going and monitoring these and understanding what's happening to them and ensuring that they are protected, we can get a better understanding of what's happening to reefs that are perhaps in a more degraded state in other parts of the world. The project has helped shape the management plan for the Shagos. We've also informed consultations by consultants on resettlement and we've guided the Foreign and Commonwealth Office British Indian Ocean Territory on their policy on resettlement. Um, we also had the opportunity to go to Westminster and to answer questions from the all-parliamentary group on Shagos, uh, which was a good opportunity to inform politicians from all the parties about the Shagos and about our work and the need for its protection. <laughs>